playing left field tonight. Ken Griffey. Here's Bill. All right, Jim Cott Griffey batting a 274, five home runs and 18 runs batted in. His last two home runs have come in a pinch hitting roll. And the stinker is low ball one. It'll be Griffey, then Hassey and Mike Pagliarulo against Jack Morse. And to right, that's trouble. And it's gone. Hit the facade on the upper deck, and the game is tied. Home run number 18 given up by Jack Morse, and he is fuming. Hey, when you go for home run in this ballpark, Jim, I, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be that bad because anybody can home run here. Yeah, Griffey just hit that ball really with one arm and that overhang. And fans, you know what happens every time a Yankee hits a home run. Hey, Ken Griffey, this buds for you. We may be seeing that a lot tonight for the Yankees with these left-hand hitters and with Jack Morris. A pitch like the one to Mattingly was uh, really on the outside part of the plate. Watch Griffey's hand come off the bat. Just got that extension with one hand, a little fly ball. There's the overhang at Tiger Stadium. I think that overhang hangs about 15, 20 feet under the ballpark. So it really isn't 325 feet down the right field line. It's a little shorter with that overhang when you get it up that high. Hassey takes the ball. He's hitting 228, two home runs, 11 runs batted in. Hassey in the right center. Oh, tell me this one's gone. How way up that <laughs> way up in right center off the upper deck and that's home run number 20 given up by Jack Morris and the Yankees now lead 3 2 back to back home runs by Ken Griffey and Ron Hassey now that one would upset me if you were a pitcher yeah I mean, if I were Morris yeah that one was uh, that one was crushed and uh, you remember what we said about Ken Griffey fans well Ron Hassey this buds for you Up in the strike zone and Hassey really known as a good low fastball hitter but he gets the barrel of the bat out in a hurry on that pitch way off the facing of the upper deck. Now if I'm Mike Pagliarulo right now I might be a little conscious for the ball being nah, up in the, no, not anymore. Don't do it anymore. No they don't do okay. that anymore. Pags batting 238. Oh how about that. Close enough. 14 home <laughs> runs 29 runs batted in. Mike uh, leads the Yankees in home runs with 14. He just missed it. Darnell Cole sent foul home, a home run by Ken Griffey and a home run by Ron Hassey. Griffey and Hassey hitting their home runs back to back in the second. And Jack Morris has now surrendered 20 home runs this year. That's quite a bit. That's an awful lot. <laughs> it is. One and one on Mattingly. You know, he's his own worst enemy sometimes out there. He gets so mad out there, he does he loses his concentration. Well, that's what Roger Craig was very helpful with uh, Jack Morris. We used to bother my, my base running on him a lot. That's foul. Two balls, two strikes on Mattingly. Take his concentration off of the hitter and uh, run the bases on him, and that really used to get him mad. He'd tear up the dugout once in a while. This is a pretty park, though, isn't it, Bill? Yes. They've got excellent baseball fans here in Detroit. Very, very knowledgeable. That's pulled foul down the right side. It's still two balls and two strikes on Don Mattingly. They've seen some greats play here. K-Line, Greenberg, Ty Cobb, Harry Heilman. Harry Heilman. There was a great hitter. Charlie Geringer. Down the left field line. That'll be out of play foul. Still two balls, two strikes on Don Mattingly. Al Newhauser. That's correct. Freddie Hutchison. Mickey Cochran. Didn't our buddy from Reading play here, Rocky Calavito? He sure did. Harvey Keene, we can't forget oh, him. Oh, they were God. traded for each other. I went to shortstop when Harvey went to center. That's gone again. Mattingly has just hit his second home run of the ball game, 
and his 10th of the year Morris takes his cap off he's upset again and the Yankees now lead by a score of four to two. Morris is yelling at somebody. I think he's yelling himself. <laughs> and you know what happens every time a Yankee hits a home run? Hey, Don Mattingly, this bud's for you. Now, Sparky, yeah, here it is again. Ball, same pitch he hit before, up and out over the plate. Kurt Gibson didn't even move. Balls are jumping out of here, Bill. And while all this is going on, the replays, uh, Sparky Anderson out. He's going to try to calm Morris down. He looks like he's doctoring the uh, pitching mount up a little bit with his foot. You can say one thing. If all the home runs he's given up, there's nobody else was on when he did it. Yep, all singled in home runs. Mattingly has two. He now has 10 on the air. And Bill Scherer gets up again and starts loosening up. He's that lean, lanky left-hander they picked up from Cincinnati. He's loosening up again in the Tiger bullpen. Leave the field after a long night's work, and we'll be back with more baseball right after this. Brand new building, and I think they're... And he had to come back. Instead of playing the ball, he played the runner. So Yankee runners at first and second as Eastler gets his second base hit. That one an infield hit. There are two outs. And Dan Pasqua batting. He went out to run for Ken Griffey in the ninth inning when Griffey was hit on the head. A pitch thrown by Willie Hernandez. That's a ball. And in a base running mistake on a ball hit the right field. Pasqua evidently thought there were two outs. There was only one. And he got doubled up at first base as he was around into the shortstop position when Gibson made the second out in right field. One and one on Pasqua. I think Danny was a little embarrassed after that. Yeah. Forgetting the number of outs. Pasqua batting 327. And that's low. He has three home runs this year, nine runs batted in. That's wide, three and one. And you know, down in the minor leagues, Danny hit the left-handers pretty good down there. It just seems to have a little more trouble up here. I don't know why. Well, once you get to the big leagues, the first thing they ask you, after you've hit minor, hit them in the minors, can you hit left-handers? You've already... So you plant the seed in your head that perhaps you can't hit left-handers. Mm -hmm. That's high. Ball four, bases loaded. Yeah, Winfield will go to third base. Like Eastler down at second. Pasqua on at first. And a pinch hitter. Billy Muffet, the pitching coach for the Detroit Tigers, now striding out to the mound. Nobody getting loose in the Detroit Tiger bullpen, and Butch Weininger is going to bat for Ron Hasse. Yankees have one other right-handed hitter on the bench, and that's Dale Barra. But they'll use Weininger here with the bases loaded and two outs, and the score tied 7-7 in the 11th inning. Here's where that 25th man comes into play. Lou can't use Dale because he needs an extra infield in case somebody gets hurt out there. And Dale will be the other catcher in case Butch gets hurt. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> so you're sort of strapped in. That's about it. Weininger batting 178. Five home runs. 19 runs batted in. He has hit four of his five home runs batting right-handed. And he's driven in 13 of his 19 runs batting right-handed. So it's Weininger against Scherer here in the 11th with the score tied 7-7. I've seen Cher get wild before, Bill. Basically, he's a breaking ball pitcher. Mm -hmm. They use him to come on and uh, get one left-handed hitter out. Ball one. No place to put Weininger without force. Has walked 17, struck out 15. That's a fastball for his play. In the left center. It's going to fall. Base hit. Two runs will score. 
Pasqua, they're going to hold him at third base. And the Yankees now left center field, just out of reach of a diving Larry Herndon. Winfield scored. Eastler scored. Pasqua goes to third base. The Yankees now 